I think you come to the Belgium to win it. One that shall we fight. Good afternoon and welcome to the Don Morrell Show, your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Little Giant program. And coach, exciting football game on Saturday, a 39-38 overtime victory at Denison, a huge two-point conversion in OT to get the victory. Uh, first of all, it was a game against a very stout Denison team. You talked about it a week ago that they would be a good quality opponent, really uh attack you with their running game, and we knew that, you know, we, we really expected that. They also got a couple of big plays. Talk a little bit about that game and your thoughts having looked at the film af afterward. Sure. Uh, really disappointed, and we had struggled uh, with our kickoff team, and we have repped it more times in my in college coaching history. We have practice and practice. Uh, we're going to try something different this week, and we're going to get it fixed. But uh, good football teams don't give up kickoff returns. I was proud of the way we responded all day. Uh, clearly, Denison uh, is a very good football team. I don't see them losing a game the rest of the season. They're, they're, they're very good. Um, and then our guys hung in there uh, tremendous. Uh, you know, people throw the word grit around all. It's the, it's the flavor of the month. Um, but our kids showed real Wabash toughness hung in there when it looked bleak and uh, came out with the victory. Yeah, they were able, uh, Denison was able to tie the game late uh, in the contest. You go to overtime and we'll go ahead and let's just take a look at some highlights from the game while we'll, we'll jump into the early uh, first score for Wabash. You were able to get out to a big lead, but the week before, Denison had played Wittenberg. Wittenberg had a 16-0 lead, and they knew they came back there. So you had to know that Denison had that comeback ability in them. I think that's what championship football teams do, and both teams were playing for the conference title. Little Giants came back after Denison took the lead uh, with that kickoff return to start the second half. Uh, talking about special teams, there were just a couple of disappointing areas on special teams. You mentioned the kickoff. Uh, with Denison returning a kick for a touchdown to open the second half. You also had a couple of penalties on some punt plays that extended some drives for Denison. What does this team need to do to kind of eliminate some of those mistakes? You know, that is kind of the uh, fog of war moment where we had two guys injured in the same position. We ended up with a guy out there who, who didn't know what he was doing um, and and in a crazy game like that, you're going to have those moments. The critical thing is to overcome them. Wabash did overcome those mistakes. Uh, Denison had the ball first in the overtime period. They scored, uh, kicked the extra point conversion, and then you marched down a really good play that I believe we're going to see right there, the uh, pass from uh, Liam Thompson to Cooper Sullivan, the little underhanded shovel that that got you down to the goal line. Donovan Snyder scored uh, for the touchdown. And then was there ever a doubt in your mind uh, having the ball second that you were going to go for two uh, if you scored? No, it, it helped that Denison scored and kicked the extra point. That set it up perfect. And uh, we knew, uh, we felt confident we could go down there and score. And then we felt really confident with the two-point play, and we'd practice it plenty. It was a two-point conversion from Liam Thompson to Jackson Claiborne. Talk a little bit about Jackson because he has had such a breakout year. He scores your first touchdown on a really nice seam route. Uh, he has continued to be one of the favorite targets of Liam Thompson all season long. What has he done to, to improve his game this season? Well, we, we really thought you were going to see it last year as a junior, and, you know, it's it's – terrible that our seniors last year lost uh, a year of football and they've moved on. Most of them have moved on. Uh, Jackson is a guy that would have had an incredible junior year and really uh, have blossomed. him. He's taken advantage of it this year, though. Fine player. Uh, goes completely unnoticed in the blocking game. Very good blocker. Conscientious guy. Uh, and uh, clearly he, he's a, a good football player for us. Liam Thompson threw for 257 yards in the game and three touchdowns. 
uh, through one of those touchdowns, as we mentioned, to Jackson Claiborne along with the two-point conversion. Heisman Skeens caught another touchdown. And then Cooper Sullivan had 10 receptions for 130 yards and the one score. Uh, how about that connection between Liam and Cooper? I mean, they, they are almost like brothers on the football field. They've spent so much time together, spent time away from Wabash uh, both this summer and last fall together. Uh, they've really become a, a tight unit for your football team. They are, and I think also it's the look we were getting from Dennis and kind of funneled the ball more to Coop. Uh, two weeks ago, it was Derek Allen. Also, I think when you look, uh, every time Heisman uh, Skeens touches the ball, it's a 20-yard a gain. He's an explosive player. And we, we still have only played four games in the last 24 months. So we're still learning about ourselves. I don't, I don't know that any team has really figured out completely who they are, but we're much closer going into week five than we were going into week one. Dennison seemed really focused on taking Donovan Snyder away from you on the offensive end, but you were able to open up the running game using Liam at, with a couple of really good quarterback draws. He finished the day with 11 carries for 79 yards. Uh, you did end up with two Donovan Snyder rushing touchdowns. All uh, the one came in the overtime period to set up the victory. Uh, how important is it to have those different options in the ground game with Liam, with Donovan Snyder? Uh, we saw Ethan Demery for the first time on Saturday. Uh, Cade Campbell has been very effective there. And then you've used the wide receivers, Derek Allen on a couple of jet sweeps, things along those lines. How important is it to have those various types of weapons available? Um, and yeah, it is important. Clearly it's running back by committee. They're all unselfish guys, uh, which really helps our situation. Dennison simply takes the run away f from you by their alignment, and they say, you're gonna have to throw the ball to beat us. I have been in games in the last, and they have not changed a whole lot in the last decade, uh, where we kind of beat our head against the wall trying to run at those guys. Uh, they're, they're just defensively, they're too good. They, uh, they did start eight seniors on defense, and I will not miss those fellows at all. <laughs> Maybe a little graduation gift for them when they walk Absolutely. across the stage uh, in May. 39-38 uh, overtime victory for Wabash over Denison. The Little Giants remain undefeated with that win. Now you come back home. Uh, a little more normal home weekend. Not all the activities going on. Uh, it, there will be uh, President Feller's inauguration ceremony, but... But that really involves a different part of the campus. The players can really just focus on the game. You get a chance to play an Oberlin College Yeoman team. Not a great record. They're 0-5, 0-4 in the conference. But they're a very competitive football team. They played Worcester in a very tough football game last weekend, uh, losing to the Scots at home 28-24. That was a close game. Uh, Oberlin actually, I believe, had a lead until uh, Worcester got a touchdown in the third period to move in front. Uh, they're a team that likes to possess the ball. They average almost 10 minutes more of possession than their opponents. Uh, what are some things you've seen from them on film that you'll want to be prepared for for Saturday? Well, certainly uh, I was an assistant here in 2012 when Oberlin came and, and we probably were 30 point favorites and they beat us. So we need to play our best game. It's not just a cliche. Um, I think our kids also learned from the uh, Allegheny game, they were really tight, especially in, in the first half, trying to make it happen on one play. We were much more relaxed in the second half of the Denison game than we were in the first half of the Allegheny game, and then that's part of kind of learning who you are as a football team, but can't turn it over. We do need to hit some big plays, uh, and then we need to get to a, a fast start helps us. I'm glad you mentioned that 2012 game. Of course, the head coach of Oberlin at that time was Jeff Ramsey, now your defensive coordinator, and I remember that day going to the locker room to give Jeff the stats when we were finished, and I told him, you know, if we had played your football team 10 times today, you would have beaten us nine times. I mean, Oberlin just executed better that day, and, and it really was a good example of 
the team that executes its game plan regardless of what their record is or even regardless uh, in some ways of what talent they bring in, what the difference might be there, as long as you execute what you plan to do, you can be the team that comes out with a victory. Uh, yeah, and I, I, especially in this year too, I don't think there's any team that can just show up and win a game. That's not going to happen. That game this Saturday will be a 2 o'clock start. Again, it uh, is inauguration weekend for President Scott Feller. Uh, the Wabash members of the Board of Trustees will be back. So with some board meetings, that kickoff is moved back to 2 o'clock. There are still tickets available. You can go to WabashTickets.com and get tickets for this Saturday's game or any of the remaining games on the schedule because the tickets for the 127th Monon Bell Classic are now available at WabashTickets.com. You can get tickets, you can reserve tailgate seats, you can get tickets on either the Wabash or the DePaul side of the field. So make sure you go there for those tickets or for tickets for the remaining games. Of course, we will have the Wabash Oberlin game on the air on the Wabash Video Network beginning at 1.40 with the pregame show, the Don Morrell show that you're watching now. And then Jim Amadon and Steve Hoffman will take you through all the game action on the Wabash Video Network. Coach, best of luck this Saturday. Let's keep things rolling. Uh, another 1-0 weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. You've been watching the Don Morrell Show, your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Little Giant program. We will talk to you next week. I think you come to the Belgium to win it. Wabash always fight.